I'm Tony Scott with BNET TV. We are here at the M Health Summit in Washington, D.C. for 2012. I am speaking with Mr. Gary Shapiro from the CEA. How are you today, sir? Tony, I am so much better now that I'm talking to you because <laughs> talking to you means I have come of age and this is an important event. Naturally, that's what most people say when they come on the show and thank you for coming on the show. So listen, you know what? This is a, this is a great space and uh, you're a leader within the industry. You've seen a lot, you've done a lot. Give me some of your perspectives on what you think this year's M Health Summit has been like. Well, this M Health Summit is obviously growing very quickly. The whole concept of technology and healthcare is changing the landscape. The headline today is about the deficit. The deficit comes from three things. One is you know, what we pay in taxes, and that's not relevant. Two is what we spend money on. The biggest thing we spend money on, out of control spending, is on healthcare. Technology provides a solution. The third way of dealing with the deficit is actually through a growing economy. Growth comes from innovation. Innovation is what we're seeing here. We're seeing the most important thing people in the world focus on innovation in healthcare and technology in one place, and that is terrific. You and I have talked about technology for many, many years, been around for a long time in the technology space. This space excites me so much because I feel like there's a socioeconomic um, movement that is changing the globe and the way things are inevitably going to be for us, for us and our children. And congratulations to you on your new, new newborn. But, but seriously, their opportunities, their life expectancy, and their ability to be empowered by the technology that, that is happening and transpiring here is pretty exciting. It is exciting. And I have to say, as an older parent, it's not like being a younger parent. You start thinking about the fact that you're not going to be around for a large portion of your kid's life. What kind of world will they have? And what I'm excited about is that being focused on innovative industries, including healthcare, they're going to have, in some ways, a great world because things are out there and happening now in the field of robotics, healthcare, nanotechnology, sensing devices, uh, electronics on a cell that are fundamentally changing the way healthcare is delivered, the way lives are lived, the way education and entertainment. We're changing the world here, and innovation is what is, what is happening to do that. Getting the people together in one place, like here or at the International CES in Las Vegas, to me is what gets me going, because that shows there's a future. Now sometimes what our government is doing and the barriers that are put up. That's what I want to talk about, and you're leading right into it. What do we got to do to change it and help it bound faster? Well, first of all, you export our lawyers to China, slow them down, speed us up. <laughs> Second of all, you change like the incentives in the healthcare system. Right now, the incentives are in the wrong places. They're for doctors to prescribe very expensive drugs. Right. They, to spread out patients' visits. To uh, the, the drug and product approval process is, is stuck in ancient years when technology is moving quickly. So we have a collision of cultures there. Some of the privacy and security issues that healthcare is bound by need a little bit more flexibility. Some of that, and this gets back to lawyers, not everything is perfect. Different people have different outcomes. They're not always predictable. Don't let the great become the enemy of the really, really good. So we have to change our thinking as a society. We've got to get people put together. We have to stop the political posturing and start solving problems and recognizing that there are solutions that innovation and technology are providing and what's the best way of doing them. The innovators are going to innovate. Don't get in their way and make sure we can get that technology and the solutions out to the people. Is there like a three-point Gary Shapiro plan for that? Because seriously, everything that you're saying is correct, but instituting, saying it is one thing, instituting it is another. Well, I have a book coming out in January. It's called Ninja Innovation. Okay. I had a book last year focused on the comeback, how innovation will restore the American dream. You were correct Best on seller, that. Bestseller. And Absolutely. It, it, it was a public policy platform. This is about being ninja innovators and what we do to really make a difference, what companies, people, and governments can do. What you can do is be flexible, focus on the problem, think out of the box. If you see a wall, you tear it down, you run around it. You, you come up with a solution that's around you. I think we have to start being flexible as a society and a government and deal with solutions. And they are laws and institutions and the status quo, which are really, I hate to say it, they're the barriers we, start, we have to start hitting down. What's the CEA's role in that? Our role is to focus on innovation and promoting it. So we have a, the innovation event of the world, the international CES every January in Las Vegas. Everyone's invited. Coming up here momentarily. <laughs> we have a book coming out, Ninja Innovation. We have a, a publication, I3, It Is Innovation. And we have the Innovation Movement, which is the Innovation Movement is a public policy platform 
focus on changing government rules which restrict or block innovation, getting the entrepreneurs going. Look, take, we have a new law, January 1. What does it do? It puts a tax on innovation in, in healthcare. Right. Crazy. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about some of the ridiculous laws. Every, usually within our conversations, we get to talk about some ridiculous laws. That's one of them. That's not good, that, that, that's How not good for anybody. How can you tax the revenue of a startup and not even consider expenses? I mean, to me, these are things that are solving problems. So what you're doing is basically you're putting a tax on startups. Existing companies, they could deal with it, they could sell. But you are discouraging innovation. And what I compare that to, by the way, is the Jobs Act. Which, which we pushed for and it passed. I'm glad that you president. brought that up. That's an Jobs important Act point. Jobs Act allows crowdsourcing, relates right. to sarbanes oxygen. Very discouraged to hear this week that the head of the SEC has delayed the rules in that because she was concerned about her legacy. It was a political thing. And in quit. Her and she quit. But the point is, is that, you know, government, again, is getting in the way. Congress says we should do this. Government gets in the way. We also got to make sure we get the best and the brightest to the United States. Eliminate those. The House passed legislation, it's going to die in the Senate. PhDs from Harvard are considered less valuable than people who win random lotteries from anywhere in the world except India or China. So basically we're saying as a country, we value randomness over highly skilled people we're training. Insanity. 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 How do we change it? I don't know. Change the Senate? Uh, ask Senator Reid to take it up? I don't know. Okay. Well, you know, here's a really good point that I want to bring out. You're a leader within the industry. The technology industry over the last 15 years has done wonders. We've broken down walls, exactly what your book is about. We've torn through things. We've found ways to make things happen. Every time a rule gets thrown at us by a, by a policy maker, we get around it. We change it. We do it. Look at how far we've come. We can do it. We just got to have more leaders, correct? Well, we have to, yes, we, and we need a more public focus. And people standing up say, look, government, you intend well, but let, let us try to solve the problem ourselves. Let, even the healthcare thing. So they are, rather than the government giving a secret deal to the drug companies so they can make more money and charge whatever they want in the U.S., what they, what they should have done is said, here's the issue. We want no American should, have, should be denied health care right. and die because of it. Every group that's affected, let's solve that problem. And then government, let's agree on the facts and let's solve the problem. Instead, secret deals, secret meetings, a 2,000-page bill, Frankly, it's a disaster and it's unfunded and it's going to have to change somehow. All right, the Supreme Court upheld it, President Obama's reelected, but there's no way this, even Democrats say this has to change. We can't afford it. Can't afford it. And it, it doesn't make sense in a lot of ways. I, I know that all the innovation that's been happening out here on the floor, the startup companies that I've spoken to, you know, again, they're, they're, they're that regular startup in their basement, in their garage, and they're wherever that are still, they're building the product, they're getting to market, but the hardest part is funding. And there, you know, the, there aren't as many funders on the floor as we've seen before. Now, granted, we've still got good pipeline coming from the Qualcomm's and the Intel's and uh, some of the other large corporations. We're not getting a lot of that startup funding like we used to see. And so I agree with you on the crowdfunding, uh, um, um, uh, uh, that particular aspect, but we got to change that a little bit. The CES is coming up here. What are some of the messages that you're driving home? Well, one of the messages clearly is we have to change in the healthcare world. The government cycle is a 15 to 20 year approval cycle for right. drugs. The technology cycle is measured in months. Uh, there is yeah. a collision of values there. And we, as I said, we cannot let the great and the perfect become the enemy of the really, really good. So my wife's a surgeon. She said, I'll perform the same operation 100 times the same way and the 100th time I won't have a good outcome. Human bodies are different. You can't guarantee humans perfection. You have to measure the risks, the illness, the, the cost in society. You have to realize that you're always fighting against the status quo. Someone is making money serving people the existing way and you have to welcome the new companies. The challenge we're facing in the U.S. is we've gotten conservative. We let the lawyers take over the system when really we should be focusing more on innovation, understand the risks, and make intelligent choices on the basis of the risk. But we got we to gotta get down under 10 years for a cycle. For it's ridiculous. That is, that, that's, that's out of control. We, they, they, we are no longer a society that can sit and wait around for the FDA and the policymakers and the lawyers, as you say, to sit and collect data. If they, got, if, if they could see the empowerment that's going on with the data collections out of a simple monitor that you can get the, that information momentarily, if they, could, if they could work that fast, I think that we right. would move a lot further along. So we have over a million lawyers. They're incentivized to sue anyone over anything. 
you know, and, but what have lawyers ever done? What Nobel Prize has a lawyer ever won? What changes <laughs> in science or math have they ever done? So in the United States, we have a litigation tax, which is huge. We should go to a loser pay system. We should get rid of the patent trolls. We have to get the lawyers out of healthcare, and we have to recognize that there are risks in healthcare. We are human beings, we're not perfect, and sometimes there are bad outcomes. And we have to just be more mature as, as a society to recognize it. You know, sometimes things go wrong, and doctors do what they can, and that's where, how we have to uh, That's fair, that's a, that's a very fair point. Again, CES coming up here, first week of January. What are, the, uh, what, what, what are two exciting things that you're looking forward to about the conference? Well, definitely the healthcare focus. We have some great things we're showing at the show. We have uh, about 10% of the exhibitors are now in healthcare. We have two great healthcare keynoters that are head of Qualcomm, the head of Verizon. We have something called HealthSpot, a kiosk where you can get great drug service by almost anywhere in the world with an internet connection. You can be diagnosed remotely by a doctor. We have Dr. Sanjay Gupta speaking. We got so great, many things going Sanjay. on focusing in healthcare and in other areas. It's definitely worth coming to. January 8th through 11th, Las Vegas, CESweb.com. Well, we'll be there, and I know you'll be there, and I hope we get a chance to do this again. Gary, thanks very much. Appreciate Thank it. You, you appreciate betcha. It. I've been speaking with Mr. Gary Shapiro, the head of the CEA here at the M Health Summit in Washington for 2012. I'm Tony Sklar with BNET TV. Thank <laughs> you.